When I was a teenager learning to dive in the Caribbean, I was obsessed with reef guides. Not the glossy coffee table ones, the real ones. The beat up books with laminated pages, hand labeled diagrams, warnings in bold. These were the books that told you what not to touch, what not to kneel on, and what to quietly respect from a distance. That's where I first met the Bobbit Worm. Not in the water, on the page. A grainy photo, a segmented body disappearing into sand, and a sentence that stuck with me longer than it probably should have. Rarely seen, extremely fast. That was enough. From there on, I spent much more time scanning the reef in search of what I couldn't see, looking at sand patches longer than necessary, wondering what might be watching back. I had just enough knowledge to be scared, and not nearly enough to understand what I was afraid of. And that fear, that unease, followed me underwater for years. The thing about bobbit worms is that most divers never see one. I can't say that's a bad thing, but it certainly adds to their mystery. And that's by design. They live buried in sand or rubble, often with only a few centimeters of their body exposed. The rest, sometimes meters of it, is hidden below the reef, anchored, waiting. When you're hovering neutrally buoyant over a patch of sand, there's nothing that tells you it's there. No movement, no warning, just reef fish behaving normally, until suddenly they don't. And that's what made it feel like a horror movie creature to me as a young diver. Something that didn't chase, didn't stalk, didn't announce itself. It just waited. As I got older and more comfortable underwater, fear slowly gave way to curiosity, and curiosity led me back to that worm this time with better tools. Bobbit worms are polychaete annelids. That means that they're segmented worms related to bristle worms, earthworms, and a massive lineage that stretches back more than 500 million years. From an evolutionary perspective, they're ancient. Their basic body plan, repeated segments, paired appendages, specialized head structures, evolved early and proved wildly successful. Each segment carries bristles called chaetae, tiny structural supports that help anchor the animal inside its burrow. The worm doesn't just sit in the sand, it locks itself into the reef matrix, like a living grappling hook. This isn't a monster design, it's an engineering solution refined over geological time. The head is where the fear really starts to make sense. Bobbit worms have five antennae extending from the front of the head, chemosensory structures that detect vibrations and chemical cues in the water. When a fish swims close, the worm doesn't need to see it. It feels the disturbance. It can taste it in the water. And then there are the jaws. They're not soft tissue. They're hardened, mineralized structures containing metals like zinc. They're dense, they're durable, they're sharp enough to shear through fish scales, and occasionally fishing lines. Those jaws snap shut in milliseconds, faster than most underwater cameras can capture cleanly. That speed isn't aggression, it's done out of necessity. Ambush predators get one chance. If you miss, the reef knows that you're there. From a diver's perspective, this is unsettling. Most reef predators telegraph themselves. You see moray eels peeking out from holes, groupers will posture themselves, barracuda cruise visibly in the blue, and many sharks are, of course, large. Bobbit worms don't give you that courtesy. They're part of the substrate, part of the background that you learn to trust. Which is why, when divers do encounter one, often by accident, it leaves such a strong impression. It's a flash of movement, a fish cut cleanly in half, and then a sudden understanding that the sand itself seems to be alive. Ecologically, bobbit worms play a quiet but important role. They regulate fish populations near the reef floor. They recycle nutrients by pulling prey underground, where decomposition feeds microbial communities. Their burrows aerate sediment, altering the chemistry of the reef base layer. So they're not invasive, and they're not anomalies. They are active participants and long-term residents of reef systems that existed before coral reefs looked the way we recognize them today. The myths came later. If you spend enough time around scuba divers, you'll learn that many have exaggerated tales. The myths came later. If you spend enough time around divers, chances are you've come across a bobbit worm horror story. There are stories of divers getting bitten, of fingers getting chopped off, of worms attacking unprovoked. In reality, verified injuries are extremely rare. 
Bobbit worms don't roam. They don't pursue divers. They don't leave their burrows unless severely disturbed. Most negative encounters happen when the reef is handled, prodded, or unknowingly damaged. Which, in a way, brings the story full circle. The worm I feared as a young diver wasn't dangerous because it was malicious. It was dangerous because I didn't understand it yet. On later dives, with more experience and more patience, I started noticing the signs I once missed. A slight depression in the sand. A pattern of rubble arranged too deliberately. Fish behavior that didn't quite match the rest of the reef. I never saw the whole animal. Almost no one does. But I knew when I was hovering above one. And instead of fear, I felt something closer to respect. That's the shift scuba diving gives you over time. You start out afraid of what you can't see. Then you realize the ocean isn't hiding things from you. It's simply not built around your awareness. Bobbit worms didn't evolve to scare divers. They evolved to survive in a crowded, competitive reef where hesitation meant starvation. Seen through that lens, they stop being monsters. They become reminders that the reef is older than us, sharper than us, more patient than us. And that sometimes the most powerful animals in the ocean are the ones that never move until they absolutely have to. Next time you hover over a quiet patch of sand, remember, the reef isn't empty, it's just waiting. Stay curious, stay current, and thank you for watching.